to how can you sign a contract at 20% schematics, right? That's crazy. No, it's not crazy. Let me show you. Take the same scale. So what we do is we establish a team. The hardest part of this process is getting the team. I'm still trying to figure it out. If I know an area and I know the people, it's pretty easy to find the right players. But I'm unfortunately going all around the country trying to help people form teams, and I'm still trying to figure out how to do it. I'm, I'm, I've got people who are psychologists trying to help me. How do I figure out if these guys are real or not? I know one thing, like that when we meet everybody, I don't want the vice president of develop, business development in the room. I want the superintendent and the project manager that are gonna be working on that job sitting there talking to me. I don't want the development guy from the architecture office. I want the project architect who's gonna work with me every single day. It's one thing, but still, how do you know that these guys are gonna really play ball? Sometimes you don't. We're doing a project where we had to kick a plumber out. After three meetings, it was obvious. He was not the right guy. He was really great in the interview. But what we do in relational contracting is we have this validation phase. This is where we form the group, and we go through and we say, can we deliver the building? What we have not done, we don't design the building and say, can we build this building for this amount of money? No, that's not what we do. We look at our project objectives, which is what we start with. We look at our budget. We take all this stuff into account and we say, can we come up with solutions, variety of solutions that will meet the budget and the objectives within this budget? Once we agree as a group we can, we sign a contract. Now, this typically in our standard would be pre-designing schematics, but the cool part is we're starting bidding and construction right here, day one. So that's where we sign our contract. This is where we all commit to it. Now, design and pre-construction phase here overlaps with our construction phase. What? I'm an architect. I want to finish everything up front. No, we want to deliver the information just in time. So one of the things we do when we are doing a relational contract, we start out at the beginning, we say, let's do a risk assessment. And we form a chart and we, everybody brainstorms, what are anything possible bad that can happen? And then we, we rate them on likelihood and cost and the stuff that's highly likely or unknown and very expensive are real risks. And the ones that are very unlikely and not too expensive really are not that big a deal. And everything in the middle is kind of in that continuum. So I would like to have a gorgeous wood ceiling down the corridor of my lobby. And I know that ceiling's gonna cost me 50K. Well, as a group, we might say, well, that's really nice. That's not a must have. And there's a lot of risk that we identified at the front end of this project because of utilities and grading, et cetera, whatever. So what we really need to do is put that decision off, not waste our time designing a ceiling that will never be built. Let's get through this phase of the project, see what we've encountered, see where our, what money we have, and see if we have the money to do that, then we can design it, right? This is a much better system for architects. For architects, I know this never happens to you. This never happens to architects where you design something, you got really cool details, really cool sections, and then somebody changes something, you have to redo all this super duper cool design. That never happens, right? You never lose money that way, you never have to redesign. If that ever did happen to you, if you ever experienced it by some tiny, slight chance of that, that happen, the nice thing about this type of project is you don't design it until it's ready to be designed. You just go far enough with the information that items can take on the table. So for example, when I'm in the validation phase, I might be considering three different structural systems, right? Do I need to know which one's gonna actually work into the final design? No, but I gotta know that within the different choices that I have, I can work within this budget. The cool thing about a relational contract, it's one contract that binds all the parties, architects, engineers, owners, major subs. They pool their profit and the outcome of the project's objectives and their profitability are tied. This is a really cool concept. I know it's hard to get your mind around, and you're probably thinking, God, I'll never get anybody to agree to this. Well, maybe yes, maybe no. This is the gold standard. It was pioneered in California on big projects that people that are using in our large hospitals, Disney, Intel. It's just now making it to the East Coast, and it's just now getting into smaller and smaller things.